She called me out here trying to get it started. Just left another shop, but the shop did some, oh, uh, I can tell, suspension work. Right now, it won't start. I don't think it's nothing they did, guys, so we're going to cut because we're going to get some slack right about now. Let's get in here and find out <laughs> exactly what they mean by no start. You know, first thing to no start is to duplicate it. Uh-oh. Y'all hear that? Spinning over fast. Let me go back to my van and grab me some uh, starter fluid. Simulate fuel presence. I'm gonna spray, look what I got here. And it's not Mopar, guys. I couldn't find the Mopar version. What I'm gonna do is spray in here and then go try to start it, guys. All right, now let's go see if it tried to start because if it tries to start, that simply means we got a fuel pressure problem. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not gonna run long. Guys, we likely need a fuel pump. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you condemn the fuel pump, guys, check and make sure you got power supply and ground at the fuel pump connector. Alrighty, guys, we back. I'm doing a long video now. Oh, I'm working outside, guys. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, uh, this is gonna be a pain in the butt and I don't have a tripod. Y'all know how to put fuel pumps in, don't you? Now, as far as why I'm why I'm putting fuel pumps in, I spoke about that on that last video. So please watch this video right here. All right. Oh, I just showed y'all a a terrible looking finger. Well, oh, guys, I got a lot of work to do, and I don't have a tripod. Uh, I'll try to explain what I'm. In fact, I got some footage of me doing a fuel pump that I haven't edited and uploaded on the same kind of car. So I'm end up putting that footage in. But uh, remember when I told y'all about this? All right. I have the two. I have the luxury of having the two. If you don't have the two, y'all know the drill, man. Improvise. That's one of my favorite words. Improvise. Okay? Do not panic. Whatever you do, do not panic. <laughs> okay? Don't panic. All right. Uh, who's side, JT? Who's side? Okay. I happen to have the two. Now, so what I'm going to do is place this two in the right spot in its groove, and I'm going to use my breaker bar. And my brute strength, y'all know I work out, right? Bench press about 500 pounds. So this should be nothing to me. Well, first, let me get this dumb connector out of the way. Speaking of this connector, guys, I will have to replace this. Y'all know uh, they rerouted the way the fuel pump is being driven. Yeah, this come with it, okay? Now, this come with it if you get a Mopar kit, okay? I've heard had a few people call me after they installed one of those cheap Derman fuel pumps and they wouldn't start. That is because... <laughs> They changed the electrical portion of it and didn't tell nobody. So uh, the customer had to go get a uh, connector or rewire his existing connector. You don't technically have to replace this, guys. All right, okay. Now I'm a realist. I also know that people are gonna improvise out there, but at certain shops, I have to do everything right <laughs> by the book. Okay, so, but here's the deal. All we doing is, I'm going to tell y'all something. Uh, I don't know who bright idea, what engineer thought of this or did this, but this is a terrible idea. Here's what's going on. This is a the fuel pump connector that plugs into this fuel pump right here. Now, if you look closely at these two wires on the end, ladies and gentlemen, the one on the very end is the positive uh, power supply. Remember, this is a motor, okay? Not a, it's the difference between a motor and an engine. That device under your hood, technically, uh, it's a engine guys <laughs> okay we'll be here all day disputing that so i ain't about to get into that this however is a motor electrical motor in other words it requires 12 volt and ground to operate okay it will not operate unless it has 12 volts and ground that's why a lot of guys back in the day used to just spray fuel in the intake manifold and then see if it start if it start they automatically assume is this without checking this Guys, I don't care what kind of fuel pump you got. I don't give a damn if you got a Mopar or no car fuel pump. Uh, uh, a fuel pump made of gold. It's not going to start or it's not going to run unless there's 12 volts and ground being given to it. Okay, so in other words, it don't matter. It could be a Derman fuel pump. It don't matter. It's not going to run unless it got 12 volts and ground. My point is, any electrical device, especially uh, a motor, will require 12 volts and ground. I have just that. I verified that. And, uh... My, this motor or this fuel pump still won't run. So this fuel pump is shorted out. Now, what was I saying? Okay, the engineer is goofed, all right? Bad decision, all right? Uh, this blue and orange wire is a 12 volt supply. And guess what? <laughs> this black and orange wire is the ground. What do you notice about those? They right next to each other. Ooh, oh, not good, okay. Now, the other three are pretty much sending unit wires, okay? But 
what we doing with this right here guys i got a video on this too i want y'all to watch it it's right here i go through the whole procedure of splicing this in the circuit now but what we doing here is essentially moving the black wire or this black and orange wire over to slot three in other words we don't want them side by side i don't think you ever want power supply and ground right beside each other something kooky or fishy could happen and cause a kaboom yeah we don't want that so when i'm done reconfiguring this all i'm gonna look like i'm gonna look like the same connector but the circuit is gonna be rewired so what they did was rewired the circuitry in the pump they didn't really rewire it maybe they did okay but here's the uh here's the pump so i'm thinking you gotta be careful with this guys this has the center unit attached to it see this uh that connector go in here so depending on how they got this wired will dictate that all right so yeah so they reconfigured how the motor is powered by simply moving some connectors all right motor still probably the same it just wired differently so now if you don't want to go through all that trouble uh and i've been known to do this on my own personal customer cars because they don't have the money for the kit it's just cut you know improvise guys my favorite word again improvise right just cut right here and move this on this cut wire over to slot three now mind you notice it's a different gauge right okay so that ground wire is a different gauge wire than the slot in number three all right so yes the thickness of the wire matters guys so but you all the way up to the connector at that point so if you're going to have any problems you know will it be at the connector end so i don't think so that's why i did i do my customer cars this way i can't do people at the shop cars that way all right too many too much liability but yeah uh, at the shop i'm gonna like this is my i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do this okay this is my friend car it's not i'm not at the shop right now so i'm gonna merely take the pin out of here take this cover off dp in this and just pull this wire out dp in this number three pull that out and just swap them over because that's all we doing by installing a new connector so now that may to some may appear as a hack <laughs> hey man i prefer the term improvise okay improvise improvision baby yeah i prefer the term improvise all right so but i'll have one of these on deck for somebody that don't feel comfortable doing this everybody don't feel like Everybody not comfortable rigging up the it's it's not a rig, guys. It's not a rig or a hack. It's just an improvision, like I just said. But some people don't feel comfortable with this, so I always tend to hang on to these and sell them. All right, guys, I got work to do, and I don't want to film this simply because I don't have a tripod. But uh, this is fairly easy. Now I got both sides, guys. I got the secondary too, okay. And that one's a little bit more pain in the butt because all of this got to travel to the other side. They connect to each other. All right, remember this is the secondary. All right, uh, remember this is a, a a funny name fuel tank. So it's fuel over there on this side. So that's that side fuel sitting in that baffle needs to be pumped to this side. It's a lot going on, guys. <laughs> All right, but this side here, the primary is responsible for supplying the fuel pressure to the engine via the fuel rail, so you can fire off things like that. But let me get to work. And uh, I can't film this, guys. Uh, this is fairly easy. And I don't have a tripod, like I say. So, And I need both of my hands. Y'all understand, right? We'll talk some more, man. Hey, make sure y'all tune in Thursday. I don't know what the day is. I don't know when this video is going to upload. But Thursday, we go live stream. We can talk some more then. All right, guys, I got to go. Thanks for watching.